Hey, hello, happy Saturday to everybody. We're gonna be playing Time Stories today. Um, full disclosure, I've played this particular part of Time Stories before, but it was like years ago. It was one of the first like larger tabletop games I bought. I I have a lot of opinions about this game. Um, I'm actually working on sort of an autopsy analysis review kind of thing for it, so I wanted to like refresh my memory on how this goes and I could just do that by you know reading through the deck and just going that way but I feel like experiencing it once more would be a good idea I also have the Marcy case which is the first um a scenario I, I wanted to say expansion which it is as well but scenario which I'm gonna play with my roommates to see you know maybe the system with different different scenario different writers and such might be better I don't know we will we will see but uh yeah I'm going to be playing four characters, I'm playing alone, but I'm going to be playing four so that we can get through it somewhat expediently. And uh, might split this over two streams, because it can take quite a while. Um, but yeah, we will uh, we will see how this goes. So, how this works is uh, once we get into the scenario, we're going to be picking specific stuff. But for this first one, what we do is we're at the uh, time corporation or whatever what's it called time something time agency we're at the time agency base before we go back in time to where we're going to be doing more stuff so we got to read through these to see how we set up so starting with base b your small group moves into the room, with two emotions crashing together with every step. Excitement over your first exposure to this technology that you've been hearing about since the start of your training, and impatience to leave this omnipresent base and discover other worlds both old and new, to travel through the ages and across galaxies. Hey guys, it's not that we're in a hurry, but don't drag your feet, barks Bob as a greeting. Alright, uh, whoops. Ah, it hooked on the edge of the board. <sighs> Yeah, I barely use this, and this board is all scuffed up, so I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, all right, next one. The mission. Your mission, normally reserved for yellow-ranked agents, comes from the consortium, and your performance will serve as an end-of-cycle examination. Your grade here will therefore have an impact on the rest of your career. Your mission is to prevent the creation of a temporal fault. One tip. Keep the number of runs to a minimum, as each new transfer costs a bundle, and will dis and will diminish your success. When all of these nutters stop playing with time, it'll be a vacation for us. Come on, let's go. Into your case homes so that Laura can take care of the rest. I, on the other hand, have other fish to fry. Don't really like the use of the term nutters. It's uh, not very nice. As you approach the caissons, Laura's voice becomes muted. Agents, seat yourself in your caissons. Once you exit, you will have you you will have to use the timeline to manage your time in your transfer zone. Ideally, you make this trip only once, but if you run out of time, you'll return here to undergo a new transfer to the same place at the same instant. This is the very principle of the time log transfer. All right. Your caissons light up as you enter them, then emit a multitude of high-pitched sounds. Laura's voice manages to be heard above it all nonetheless. You will be transferred to 1921 in what the inhabitants of the time call a psychiatric asylum. We have little reliable information as to what is taking place there, but we can confirm the possible creation of a temporal fault. Your mission is to prevent its creation. Statistics. On this mission, your receptacles will have the following statistics. Deafness slash agility, glibness, and strength slash combat. As might be expected, not all receptacles are equal when faced with adversity, and those you'll, inha and those you'll inhabit at the Beauregard Asylum are in slightly bad shape, which is why they've been placed there. You will thus have to deal as best as you can with their issues. Okay. Before you transfer, please follow the instructions below. Final preparations. Place the item cards face down on their space. So let's see. Item cards. That is the next one here. Keep those in order. I believe those go there. Then the four playing cards face up on their dedicated space. Oh, it's a map. Okay. Do, 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 do. 
And all right, the group token on the day room. Day room is in the middle. The area in which you'll arrive. The time token on 25 to you. 30 if you have only three agents. Well, um, where did I put? Oh, there it is. We will go with 25 since I'm going to be playing with four despite being alone. Let's see. And the five mission successful failed cards on their dedicated space face down. Uh, where are those at? Right, here they are. In fact, let's put those over there. Okay, flip that over. Laura's voice starts to be drowned out by the deafening sounds of the surrounding machinery. Your transfer will happen shortly. Be sure to note this vitally important information. According to sources of dubious trustworthiness, it seems that a secret society is hiding inside the building. If the information to take place to do that, you must locate it. The, the, and on location, you should be able to find help, but your receptacles, it isn't. Transfer. Choose a receptacle, then place their life points on the card. Keep the icon reference card close at hand. Determine who will be team time captain, not team captain. This person closes the base, places these cards next to the board, then opens the following area, the day room, placing the cards face down. The time captain then reads card A out loud, and this is how the adventure begins. All right, so I'm going to pick four receptacles after I put the base away. And we're going to set this up. Uh, yep, that's it. Okay, um, so we are going to move these aside for now, and I'm just going to pick a balanced party. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, let's pick one who's real strong. Hmm. Let's pick Ferdinand Meunier. Then let's pick Eugene Basquet. Um, these are all French names. Is this set in France? I didn't really mention that. And then uh, Marie Berthelet. You know, I'm just gonna pick all the ones that have threes. Cause like, <laughs> Frankly, I don't really feel the need. I'd love to see this as a video game. That's the big thing with this game, um, and I'll tuck these aside, is that it's effectively just like a, a classic point and click sort of um, adventure game made tabletop, which kind of works. Uh, it's even got like a save system and you play through it over again. You know, whenever you fail, you get to try again from a checkpoint, basically, but uh, it ends up being a little tedious because your checkpoint's basically, like, at the beginning or, like, even, like, not that far back, but all of that. Um, but, yeah, I feel like a digital version of this would work a little better because this is a, a huge board for what is, really, this is, like, the only area of major interest. This whole time track is way too big. The map's nice, but, like, yeah, they could have shrunk this down by, like, 30%. All right, so I have picked uh, my characters. Let's actually go through them to make sure I know all of that. Marie Berthollet, uh, a Rotomania. Oh, this is nothing, just a bit of rouge on my lips. Do you like it? She's got two deafness or agility, uh, three glibness, and one combat strength. She's also gonna have health 
So Marie is convinced that the people who come up to her are madly in love with her, but don't dare let her know. Over time, she's gained a real talent for convincing the people to whom she's speaking to to fall under her charm. Um, after her role on a glibness, Marie can turn a die of her choice into one success. She starts with two health. Then we have Felix Bonafont, Paranoia. What? You're talking to me? Huh? Are you talking to me? He's got one deafness and agility and three combat strength. Um, and he has three life points. There we go. In a combat, he can, uh, for each blank die obtained in combat, he inflicts one point of stress and place a green token from the reserve and on that card. When he has accumulated three tokens, his paranoia spikes and he attacks another agent present in the same space as himself. This agent loses one life. If Felix is the only agent present, he loses one life himself. Then discard the stress tokens. Hmm, okay. Then we have Eugene Bosquet, Paralyzing Delusion. Be careful with my legs. He's got three deafness agility, one or three glibness, and one combat strength. And three life points. Eugene must be placed or moved to a space containing at least one agent. If you don't, the party loses one t uh, TU, which is how much time we have. And yet his paralyzing belief disappears in combat situations where he shows an uncommon celerity. Thus, he's the only one able to flee from a locked card. Okay. And then we have Ferdinand Meunier, Shell Shock. Come on, breathe. Don't be an idiot. Breathe. Uh, we've got two glibness and three combat strength. In a combat role, Ferdinand can't stand seeing someone die. When he's faced with an enemy who has only one or two shield, he's paralyzed and unable to fight. Okay. Yeah. There we go. We are all set up with those guys. So now we're going to read Day Room A. You find yourself in the day room of an asylum. It's the end of the afternoon. The room is calm with a gramophone filling the place with sweet music. The low sun illuminates all with an amber light. The nurse in charge of the hall stands near the door. Behind her, a man is very focused on his chessboard. In the background, enjoying the light of the large windows, a young woman paints frantically. She throws you furtive, disturbed glances. Sitting in a corner of the room, a man gives you a slight wave. And, uh, nothing about the piano. All right. In fact, now that I've read that, I'm just gonna slap that down. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's the thing, is I, I think if you did it on, like, say... Switch, or it was on, only online, so you all had different screens, or even on mobile, but there's just no pass and play. You basically let everybody go in the same area, and then you can just like hit when you've already done the thing, and you got to be on some kind of voice call to communicate everything. It could work. I, th I think it could certainly work. Um, yeah, or at least something similar to this. But effectively, it's just a multiplayer adventure game, so... If you all just worked on one together, kind of, I don't know, the multiple characters is kind of hard to do. Um, for the sake of keeping it clear who is who, I'm going to put these guys down. So now you can see which is which. All right, so who is going to go where? We're going to send pink and green over here we're gonna send blue to the piano and we're gonna send yellow there so when you're playing with multiple people you're supposed to paraphrase and like not say everything but i'm just gonna read the cards out as is since i'm playing alone anyways so uh be prepared for that um all right day room d let's see as you approach her, the young lady becomes totally absorbed by her strange painting and pays no attention to you. Ah, there are clues here, though, of some sort. So let's, uh, I'm just going to take a picture with my phone rather than write them down. All right, so that was not super helpful straight out, but good to keep that. Good to keep that in mind. 
Then we're going to go to day room E with the spy versus spy looking guy. Uh, do you know what I know you know? I am the one who knows. I'm not crazy. They're the crazy ones. It's a conspiracy, and I know everything. And I know you're going to save us. Here, I managed to steal this from them. Take item 24. Item 24. Item 24 is that one. It's a key. A rather well-made key received from a patient in the day room. Okay, whoops. I actually flipped over the item deck, but I didn't read anything. Um, and then day room F, what's up with the piano? Take item 22. Okay. Uh, Oops. Keep thinking to flip it over, but no, 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 no. Spoilers. Uh, oh, it is a newspaper. Let's see here. Le siècle. Uh, redactions. Bah, bah, bah. The, the Humbert trial. Murder Court of the Seine District. The opening of a sensational case. Composition of the audience room. The entrance of the accused makes a splash. First interrogations. Mrs. Humbert claims the existence of her inheritances. She'll speak, she says, when it's time. Frederick Humbert denies his participation in the fair. He energetically defends his father's memory. The audience seems to be rather entertained. The hearing is delayed until Monday. And then the crazies from Beauregard. Ooh. I mean, that is probably how they would have said it back in the 20s, but that's not, that's pretty uncomfortable. It's now been over a week since five lunatics, inmates of the Beauregard Asylum, have been declared missing. According to the police, the investigations are ongoing and the theory of an escape is probable. Okay, well, let's hang on to that there. Um, oh, right, I forgot you have to spend a time unit for each turn. So, uh, do we want to check out the other spots. I mean, we got a key. We got some kind of clues. I don't... Mm, I think... I mean, I don't have anywhere specific I want to go yet. Let me look at this one again, see if there's any clues I'm missing. Um, southeast, then clockwise. So I suppose... Uh, we'll go to the dormitory. So I gotta roll to see how much time it takes us. Two. Alright. So let's put away the day room. Infirmary. Promenade. Dormitory. Okay. So these two, I need to have the two blue and the four gray to go into those. So they're not options for us. Um, let's see, uh, let's read A. After walking a few minutes down the asylum's corridors, you enter the dormitory. It's a large room bordered by two rows of beds. At this time of day, only a few beds are occupied by apathetic patients who, between a few senseless mumbles, let out discreet snores. To the left, a patient calls to you from his bed. At the back of the room, lockers hold the personal belongings of the patients. And to the right, through the windows, you glimpse the large park on the east side of the building. A closer look might allow you to better scope out the surrounding area. Well, I got enough characters that I'm just going to go to all of them. So let's do so. All right, what's up with this guy in the bed? The man, chained to his bed, grimaces and shouts, begging you to free him from his bonds. They're going to kill me. I don't want to die. I haven't done anything. Not crazy. Free me. No one else will know about it, please. Um, well, that will open up dormitory E. And, I mean, I'm inclined to think that they're generally being cruel to a patient in an asylum in the 20s. So, uh, it's a two glibness. So let's first off. I mean, I can get that. I could get that pretty easy with, uh, with pink here. So, yeah, let's go for it. So we're rolling three. 
And I've got five successes. So that gets rid of the two shields. Gets us. Yeah. Gets us the two blue. All right. Which means that this one is available, so we will check that later. Um, oh yeah, I need to spend one for the turn. Then, you can break into multiple lockers at the back of the room. This is a normal deafness test. You can stop whenever you want, but the number of items between two, three, and four that you can take depends on the number of remaining shields. Okay. We need five shields. All right, and was yellow, yellow does not have any glibness, so that's not gonna help. Shoot, hmm. Okay, so uh, I'm going to send someone else over here who has more glibness, or sorry, deafness and agility, excuse me. Glibness is the uh, yellow. So let's see. Hmm. Um, anything else on here? No, it's the same on both sides. Hmm. Well, let's see what's dormitory D. You get closer to the window, admiring the view in the park. You spot a large greenhouse and see inside it an animal. A blink of the eye later, the beast is gone. A beast that looked like an enormous winged cat. Truth or illusion? Well, that's what she was painting, so I figure that's probably not an illusion. Um, let's spend one more here to have everybody move around. So let's see. Uh, we'll have yellow move here. You guys, th those guys there. And... Hmm. Let's move blue here, too, so that we can get through all of that. So let's see what Dormitory E is all about first. As soon as you free him, the man stares at you. Then a disquieting grin twists his features. But, 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 it's you! It's you! You are my executioner, the one who left me here to rot until I die. He rushes you. Well, all right. So we've got three to fight him off. This guy has three combat, so we're going to do pretty all right. Yeah, here we go. We got him for one hit. And what is, hold on. <laughs> Let me double check how the combat works. Right, so we have three at the site. Let's uh, let's remove two, so we have two. Um, and his resistance is four, so we're fine. Uh, am I able to do? No, that's just that's the one turn. Also, I forgot to spend this. Then while he's dealing with that, we're gonna do this one. We're gonna start with um, Eugene. So he has three swiftness slash agility. Nothing. Okay. Well, he didn't do anything there. So Marie is going to go. Marie hits it for one. Um, wait a minute. Do they reset every turn? Let me double check. No, they only reset if you leave, so, okay. And then uh, Felix will give it a shot. Nothing. All right. One more TU. We're going to head back to um, Ferdinand, who's got three. Oof. Uh, still safe. 
and takes him out. So that gets us, well, it doesn't get us anything. But uh, he survived, so that's something at least. Did I already do the time for this? I think so. If I didn't, let me know. Um, all right, so once again, start with Eugene. Five, all right. That's the rest of the shield, so we get three items. Which are two, three, and four. We get, uh, ooh. In the dormitory, we found a piece of paper with scribbled symbols. Here's the transcription. So that looks like a clue. I'm gonna put that over that one. A ruby, a fake ruby found in the dormitory. And a plunger, a plunger to unclog toilets. Uh, that might be an anachronism. When were plungers invented? Hey Siri, when were plungers invented? 1874, okay. Thank you, Siri. So, okay, okay, fine. Um, let's, I don't think they would have looked like that, but I guess I was wrong on that. So we did all of that. All right, we are gonna move to the next area. Um, let's see, southeast and then clockwise. So we would go to the kitchen next. Let's try it out. Um, yeah, we're gonna put away all of these, remember, four gray in the dormitory. We might be able to come back and do that. Um, wait a minute. Right, that was just like a clue thing. Okay. And then we're scooting over to the kitchen, which costs us two time. Kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. All right, the kitchen. Let's, uh, we'll tuck these guys away first. Let's see, after having wandered for some time in the corridors, you reach a room next to an empty refectory, the kitchen. A rather unpleasant cabbagey smell fills this room, e uh, edged with work areas that are covered in pots, pans, and other cookware. To the left, a man in his 50s turns to you and begins to smile after he sees your group. By the back wall, two men are washing dishes and pay you no attention. In the far corner, a man and a woman talk to one another in a low voice. Hmm. All right, well, let's just uh, do it like so. Actually, I will put Ferdinand here because if this ends up being some kind of confrontation, he is my strongest fighter. So just to be safe, just to be safe. Let me grab some water real quick. All right, and that costs us another time. Kitchen B first. Ah, you again. You're really inseparable. I suppose you've come to beg me for another scrap of meat to feed to the cats in the park. Well, that's not a problem so long as you have. The man leads in and continues in a low voice. Two doses of nose candy. Um, we don't have any cocaine, which are the uh, blue icons, apparently. Sorry, I'm just double-checking that I didn't forget anything. Um... So I can either negotiate, which is not my strong suit, or give him two blue tokens. I don't have any blue tokens, but Marie is a, a s nice talker, so we're going to switch her over there in a minute. Let's see what C's all about. Get out of here, you crazes. Where do you think you are? We're working here. You see, tied to one of the men's belts, a large metal key. To steal the key from him, you need to get at least two 
success is on a single roll. If you do this, take item six. Only one agent can attempt to steal, and only one attempt can be made. If you fail, the team is immediately expelled from the kitchen. You cannot return to this room this run. Place a yellow token on this room on the plan. Ooh, okay. Uh, I'm not going to do that as her. I'm going to move move some guys around before I take any any of those actions. Have you heard the latest? The two of them were found doing something shady. Really? No, but where? In the park's kiosk. Can you believe it? The doctor and a nurse. The man suddenly turns to you. What are you doing here? Get back to your quarters. Okay. So, D is useless. I guess there's a nurse and a doctor having some kind of some kind of affair. Who cares? But uh, we're going to swap some things around. Let's see. I need deafness here. So we're going to get pink over to here, her over to there, and he can hang out. And that costs us one. And then another one. And we're going to do some rolls. So let's do this one first. And that's four shields. Okay, we're going to talk to him. We're going to do blue first, which is three. We've got two. Get rid of those. And we're going to uh, try it again with Ferdinand. Come on, Ferdy. Hey, there he goes. So we obtain item 12. Item 12, two pieces of meat. Two good pieces of meat received in the kitchen. You can eat them. Discard the card to recover a uh, two. Um, I'm pretty sure that one is a clue for later. So let's just toss the meat over top. And that's that guy done. And now we're going back to this. We're going to try and be a little deft. So we only get one roll on this, and we get kicked out if we mess up. So Pink is going to try it because he's got the most deftness slash agility. So let's uh, let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, I forgot. Marie uh, can get get a success. Oops. Oh well. Um, let me just double check. Oh, I am clipping, aren't I? Let me turn my mic down a little bit to be safe. To be safe. I don't want to be too loud, but let me know. Um, yeah, I think I'm good. And it's all downhill from there. Well, we got kicked out. Yellow on the kitchen. We gotta go. That's unfortunate, but in another run, we might be able to do a little better. So let's get out of here. Let's go to the infirmary. That's next up anyways. So that's gonna cost us... Two time. <laughs> Where it did I miss it? I think I missed it. Ah, there it is. Yeah, I skipped by it. Okay. Okay, um, let's see, it's going to be, let's do these two there, or, right, I should read it first, huh? Uh, you cross the main corridor of the asylum, then open a massive door over which a sign reads, Infirmary, access forbidden to hysterics and agitated patients. Behind the door, a large room holds a few beds on which patients are lying. At the bedside of one of them, an assistant nurse administers treatment under the attention of Attentive eye of Josephine, the nurse you previously met in the day room. I didn't talk to her. Oops. Um, directly in front of you, an orderly stares at you continuously and smiles widely at you. No doubt an invitation to speak. On the right, a large armoire filled with medicine of all kinds catches your attention. Let's send... 
let's send these two to the cabinet. Send Marie to talk to him. And let's send uh, Ferdinand over there. All right, let's see how it works. B, the assistant nurse, seeming panicked, speaks to you in a low voice while glancing toward Josephine. I can't talk to you here. If you want to learn more, meet me later in the dormitory. I'll wait for you there. She then quickly returns to her duties. Take the four gray token. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna head back to the dormitory later then. Then D, you start, uh, that's a concerning picture. You start a conversation with the orderly. If no woman is present on this card, there is. The conversation ends surely until he's nothing of interest. Put the card back on the table. If however, at least one woman is present, you must turn the card upside down and read the following. Shunk. Pierre, that's his name, holds you tightly and tries to pull you to a corner of the room. He'll have to talk quickly to slip his grasp and be able to leave this card. Well, thankfully, Marie is my best talker, so let's see how she do. All right, here we go. I gotta hit all four. Oof. And then we're going to turn that to a success. So that gets rid of two. And then we're going to see Infirmary E. If you own key 24, I do, take item seven. What do we got? An injection kit. OK. A kit for injections and a vial containing three doses of cocaine. Okay. This is going to be these three then. Allows a receptacle to recover three health. Place three on this card, discard one to recover a health. The cocaine can also be used by Vassal. Who's Vassal? Is that a receptacle I didn't pick? That might be another character. Well, let's put that over top of the plunger with our three doses of cocaine. There we go. And that is that for uh, that turn. So we got to do another one over here. All right. She gets three. Hey, and that gets rid of him. All right. So we got the injection kit. We can go back to the dormitory. Infirmary C... Yeah, let's just move uh, these guys, just so we don't waste the turn. Ah, you again. I just ran into Dr. Hyacinth, who reminded me that he had an appointment with a small group today. His office isn't far, and you know the way. Go when you feel like it. I never talked to her, so that's a bit of a continuity error, but whatever. We get item eight. Why, it's... Oh. It's a new map card. You've discovered a new location. Place this card on the current plan. Well, that's neat. All right, and then we're gonna move uh, back to the dormitory first, I think. We'll come back to the promenade eventually. So that costs us two. And we're swinging over. All right. So we're all interested in F. Let's hurry, because I know what will happen to you. The doctor has gone insane. I have this letter that I found as proof. And Josephine isn't much better. No matter what happens, I'd rather know you to be free than dead. There's an entrance to the catacombs. Find it, then flee as quickly as possible. She lowers her head and walks away from you, shocked by what she just did. Take items 5 and 18. Okay. Five. 18. Alright. Five is, ooh, a letter. 
February 12, 1921. Dear Professor, I have managed to gather the elements indispensable to the success of our project. In order to operate with the greatest discretion, I have identified five patients who should allow us to fulfill the conditions as required by our plan. The... the... The crust? The crypt is, access is accessible via the ink splash. To be faster, I found a passage which allows us to reach the park from my office. Wait for them there to guide them to their destination. The great day is close, Dr. Hyacinth. Boy, I don't trust Dr. Hyacinth. And number 18. You've discovered a new location. Place this car on the current plan. Catacomb entrance. Oh, whoop. Well, let's go to the catacomb entrance, I guess. That sounds very promising. Three. Oof. That's an expensive one, but let's do it. Er, what am I doing? You move this. Location 17. So we're leaving the dormitory. There's a lot of locations, hold on. I'm doing it. Uh, it. There it is. Yeah. Location 17, the catacomb entrance. E, C, D, and E. What does it say on here? Let me uh, look up what that means. I forgot. Everyone must go there, so let's go with, well, let's see, location 17. You move forward tentatively in this narrow passage that seems endless. Suddenly, you hear a deep breathing interspersed with light growls. You can't go back. The men, the creatures in the tunnel, have spotted you. Be careful, as this location is special. You must move as a group and reveal the cards one by one. Going off on your own is forbidden. If you do not own the three pink token, you must explore these cards in their natural order, B, C, D, and E. Once the final card, E, is resolved, head to location 16. If you do own that, you must explore those in a different order for some reason. And uh, once you get to the last card, I guess backwards, take item 18. So I'm guessing if you came from the other direction, you would get that. Okay. So let's start it out. Number B, fight. Whoa, that's a scary monster, man. Hurry, hurry. So we're gonna go with Ferdinand Meunier first, of course. And we get six hits. Bam, done. All right, spend a time, hop over here. You reach a door barring the path. The lock seems like it could be picked with a bit of deafness, but if you don't have the patience or the time, a bullet should have, uh, should you have one, will do the trick. I do not have a bullet or a gun, so uh, we're gonna go with deftness. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, um, who is the most deft? Eugene, he gets three. So let's give it a shot. We got three off. Then, next up would be Marie, who gets two. That's one. And old Felix got one. So let's see if he can get a double. Nope, nothing. 
All right. I have to spend another time because uh, unfortunately Ferdinand ain't got nothing. And we're going to hit it with Eugene again. Nothing. Okay, Marie. Nothing. And Felix. Nothing. Oh, boy. We're running very low on time. Three. Good work. There we go. All right. One more. A hybrid creature straight out of a nightmare, apparently carnivorous, blocks your way, having decided to eat you. Fight it or toss it some meat. Why, I will toss it some meat. So let's just get rid of number 12 here. All right. So I don't even need to fight it. Nice. Then we got our last one. Is it an immediate failure as soon as we hit zero? Let me check. Ah. Yep, that's an immediate failure. All right. First failure. Yeah, I'll let this slide because it's your first mission, and apparently a bit of adaptation time is always needed. But for the next run, gang, you need to put in more effort. It's not only your rank that's in play here, but also my reputation. Come on, let's get back to it. Don't waste time and use your brain cells. You're still young. For your next run, keep in mind that your rank will depend directly on your performance. Leave the items uh, stamped with that in place, but reset other game elements, discard cards, acquired items, tokens, life points, etc., to their starting places and initial values. Reread cards F and G of base, follow Laura's instructions, and head off on another run. So we're going to do that, uh, but I will take a break first. So let's reset, and then I will go on a break here. So we lose our cocaine, unfortunately. Um, then all of these items go back. It's a lot of items. Oh, geez. Let's see. Four, seven, twenty-four. Three, four. 22, and two. All right, all the items have gone back. Oh, never mind. I got to put back all of the, uh, all these guys too. Okay, and then these go back in the thing. And, um, hmm, I think we keep these? Let me double check.
No, right, they're not expendable, but you don't get to keep them. Okay, that's unfortunate, but um, we're gonna go back to the base. Do, 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 do. We go with F. The item cards are down, the four plan cards. Token on the day room. Um, the time token on 25. And the five missions successful failed, right? Yep, and then we open the day room. All right. Okay, so everything is set back up and we are going to come back to it in just a bit. But for right now, I'm going to take a quick break since it seems like a good spot for it. So I'll be our back. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch the internet dial. Be right back with more time stories in just a bit. Okay? Okay.
Hey, there we go. Hello, everybody. We're back. Time for the second run. Two runs. Hopefully, it's only two runs, but, you know, with this game, it's hard to say. So, we're starting out in the day room. Not much choice in the matter. Uh, let's... Let's do the two we didn't do last time. Wait. I think this guy gave us an item, so let's do it like that. Uh, we don't need this because it was just a clue for later, uh, so it didn't give me us an item or anything, so I'm going to say getting the information to begin with was the deal. So uh, let's check him out in order. Uh, do I have to read this? I don't need to read this again. Let's see. You aren't going to ask me the day's schedule again, are you? It's the same for every day. For the moment, you can take advantage of the day room and of the promenade. Then you'll head back to your dormitory at the end of the day. If you want to look for me later, I'll be in the infirmary. My name's Josephine. Josephine. Okay. So, yeah, that's just a character introduction. Day room C. As you come closer to the man, you hear him mutter, I might be crazy, but I won't let myself be taken. Once you're by his side, he begins to shout at you. They've taken the crazies, all of the crazies. They even said the bishops were crazy. Only the tears of the manticore could have saved them. They've taken the crazies. After looking at the game board, you realize that all of the bishops are missing. And he's not wrong, because I feel like that's probably a manticore, given what... I mean, we saw it before, so I'll just show. Yeah, I think that is what we saw in the aviary, or whatever it was. Then, day room E... Uh, yes, item 24, which is a key that uh, I need for the cocaine. Watcha. A key. Great, now we're going to run right out to the infirmary first. So let's roll it. Three. All right. You know, I might have been doing this wrong. Hold on a second. Okay, no, I've been doing it correct. All right. So we're going to the infirmary to get some cocaine, and then we'll probably hop by the kitchen. For that meat. All right. I ignore him. Don't need, don't need any of that guy. And then uh, let's see, B gives us the gray token. Thank you for that help. C opens up Dr. Hyacinth's office. I don't trust him, but maybe we'll need it. And E, then we're going to use the key, which gets us the cocaine. Uh, oh, I get three. Okay, there we go. Then we're going to roll it to head over to the kitchen. Two. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Hiff, whiff, whiff, whiff. All right. Kitchen. I don't remember if there's anything we need to do in the promenade, but uh, we might swing by there if we have time. Uh, da, 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 da. So yeah, um, I think we end up with, no, we don't end up with anything for that one. Not that it matters too much. Um, and let's see, deftness. Yeah, let's put pink over here because we're going to want to try and make a roll for that. Kitchen B. So... He wants uh, 
to cocaine. So let's give him the cocaine. That gets us item 12. Item 12 being the meat. And then C. Uh, we need to try and steal from him. So we're doing three. Ooh, get at least two on a single roll. Yes. Okay, item six is ours. A large key stolen from a cook. All right. In fact, let's just uh, lay the keys on top of each other. Then we're going to head over to the dormitory. Yeah, so that we can get the uh, instructions in the next spot. Cool. Two. Oh, and it should have cost me one to do the uh, roll there. All right. So, yeah, we're going to send the ones with the deftness here. And we'll just send him over to F. So, C, you got to roll the deftness. Okay, let's roll those. One. And then two. Nothing. And one more. Nothing. Okay. Dormitory F. Take items five and eighteen. Right. Five is that spooky letter. And 18 is the map. Then, I'm going to do this again, so that'll cost us another one. Here we go. Three. And then we're going to do another two. Hey, there we go. So we get items two, three, and four. A plunger, a ruby, and a spooky thing there. I don't know if these are going to be useful, but let's, uh, let's tuck them under there. And then we're going to head over to the catacombs again. Whoa. Excuse me. Excuse me. Location 17, Catacomb Entrance. And that will cost us two. And we're going to do them in order. One at a time. First up, fight. Just got to do it. So we're going with Ferdinand Meunier first. Whoop, oh, oh, I rolled that one for some reason. Okay, that's two. Um, oops. Forgot to put out the skulls. Five, which I believe does him a damage. Oof. Um, but we hit him for one. Then we'll do two. No, that's another three, so let's do three. Two, two. Got him. All right, took him down. Then we move over here, which costs us one. Uh, oh, actually, that should have cost us one to do the fight as well. Uh, you reach a door. 
So we're gonna have to deftness this. Which is fine. Er, whoop, nope. Er, yeah, that will cost us another one. So we're gonna do deftness. That's one. That's two. And that's nothing. All right, gotta do it again. Two, there we go. We're through. Cost us another one. Uh, give him the meat, which doesn't cost us nothing. Not one thing at all. And then we're gonna spend another one. Hop over here. Location E. All right, so we're gonna fight once more. So that's gonna cost us one. So we're gonna do a three. That's one. Um. Uh, th three, which is not more than his resistance. I'm gonna do another three. That's two, took him out. There it is, the four yellow. And that's just it then, I guess? Once the final card is resolved, head to location 16. Let's do it. Just gonna... Cost us something, I guess, right? Yeah. Two. All right. So we have three versions of A for the catacombs. Okay, uh, we do this one. You emerge from the catacombs to find yourself in an underground room with a high ceiling that's dimly lit by a skylight. Looking around, you discover many paths out. To the left, a half-opened gate grants you access to a fly of stairs that seem to lead deeper underground. The strong stench of putrefied flesh gives you pause. In the middle, a closed gate bars your way to a long corridor, at the end of which you see a halo of light coming from a crypt. To the right lies the entrance to the catacombs from whence you came. Um, okay. So we're gonna go these boys together and we'll check it all out location 16b if you're decide if your team decides to take these stairs then two outcomes are possible depending on whether or not you own the three pink card if you have it take item 25 then head to location 14 otherwise the team heads straight to location 14 okay i'll remember that location c the lock is too sturdy to be broken, and it looks like it requires a code. To compose the code, follow the instructions of the five pentacles. Hmm. Five pentacles. That, hmm. Wait, hold on. I think there was a clue in that painting earlier. Um, southeast, then clockwise. Uh, let's look at this as well. Five 
five pentacles. I only have five and three. Hmm. So I only have two pentacles. Okay. Let's see what's up with D. If your t this team decides to enter the tunnel, head to... Lo okay, that's just heading back. So let's go to location 14. Two. Okay. Oh, this doesn't look great for us. Okay, so you need all three of those for that. So uh, we're going to do it out the same way, I guess. The stairs burrow into the earth and finally lead to a corridor with a rocky floor. The smell and the ambient humidity make you nauseous. After a few yards, the tight passage opens into a dark cave. The smell is truly atrocious. In the dim light, you see a few vaguely humanoid shapes moving slowly. Okay. B. Must fight. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. So I'm going to be uh, going with each of them, I suppose. All players present on space C when this card is first revealed immediately lose one. Right. And then D, fight, then take that token. Okay, so that's three. Oh boy, it all comes down to a brawl em up, huh? Okay. After you've defeated this creature, roll a die. On a side showing at least one, it stands back up and recovers. Ooh, that's not great. Well, we're gonna be doing them one by one. So here we go, on the left. We got two, and then they hit me. Uh, they don't hit me, so that's good. Then we're gonna do these guys. String with green. Three, A. Got him. So then pink is going to, uh, <clears throat> uh well, wait. Got to grab this. So then uh, Pink, because he didn't move, is going to go help this guy. And then we're going to go with this. She only has one, so that's not great. That's it. Three. That's two. Um, versus four, which I think kills her. Oh, okay, you only lose one. That's fine. Then we're going to go back to over here. Uh, that will cost us one. That's two. Then we're going to do the, uh, the one. Yeah. Nope. Three. Yep, he loses one. Then, uh, oh, this guy is going to move over here. And then she is going to 
uh, over here. All right, and that is the end of the run. Oh boy. Well, we failed. Come on, wake up. You're not finished yet. These missions cost the agency a lot of energy, so don't add to that cost. I was hoping it wouldn't come down to this, but now it's too risky not to. I'm forced to start the emergency protocol. Come on, back to it. All right. Reread. Uh, emergency protocol. Add five TU to your start time. If you reach zero again, continue to play and move the token normally. But know that your evaluation will suffer for it. Okay. And if the whole party dies, move the time marker 7 to you on the track and carry on with the same run. Oh boy. So we're in easy mode now. Effectively. And we're going to have to reset everything. Hold on. <laughs> All right. It's gonna be a minute to replace all these items. Do, 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 do. All right, then <clears throat> set up the day room. Okay, and there. Just gonna crank everybody right there. Anything else I'm forgetting? Um, base. Nope, that's correct. Let me get some water, and we will start our new run. Uh, yeah, basically, like, you only start with half in any case, so... <clears throat> I'm guessing the, the 60 is only there. Well, I suppose it depends on the thing. I guess other, um, other scenarios could start you with more. It's just that this one always starts you with 25, then 30 if you fail, and then, you know, now we can crank it up to 60 to finish it out. All right, day room E, we get item 24. Do, 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 do. Which is the key. Then we're going to immediately move to whoops, to the infirmary, which costs us two. And then we're just going to split up between these three. So we get uh, the gray token. 
and item eight, which is for the map. And E, which lets us take seven. All right. So that is all of that. And we're gonna actually hop by the promenade to see what's up. So that is gonna be over here. And it'll cost us two. All right. Ooh, a lot of the promenade involves uh, having other stuff. Okay. There we go. Promenade. Despite the glaring sun, the wind whips at your face and the cold chills your bones. The yard is surrounded by walls high enough to drive any thought of breaking out from your mind. To your left, on a small patch of grass specially set up for it, three people seem to have just finished a croquet game. I suppose so. In the back of the yard, a large gate is guarded by two watchmen, and through it you can spy a park and its tree-bordered paths. And to your right, near the wall, a patient in a tuxedo spins around, improvising some short choreography. Well, let's check it all out. Um, yeah, that should be good. Let's check out B. One of the three cro croquet players greets you and invites you to come with them under the unwavering gaze of the nearby watchman. Hey, there you are. How about a quick game? If you want to join them in a game, um, you could do four or pass. Oh, oh, I see. You got to do it to get it. Gotcha. So here we go, trying out a test. Um, so first off, let's see what everybody's got. Through the bars of the gate, you can see the park's paths. The gate is locked and the two guards are keeping eyes on you, but perhaps with a bit of glibness, who knows? If you own key six and you can persuade the guards, you obtain item nine. We're gonna have to come back for that. Then D. As you approach, the man becomes more animated. Shh, it's, a, it's Moonstep. I'm with you. I'm an undercover agent. I found a way to activate a fault, but I lost the artifact required. If you find it, come back to see me. If you own item four, you can immediately reveal that. Okay, well, I don't own item four in this run, so unfortunately, nothing doing there. So we're going to spend one, and we're going to roll this. Starting with Eugene. That's two. And then nothing from Ferdinand, unfortunately. All right, so we'll spend another one. We will do it again. Yeah, I got him. So we're revealing this one. You crush your opponents, who don't seem to like this very much. In frustration, one of them smacks his mallet right into his neighbor's head. Within a few seconds, the scene degenerates into a brawl. Take item 20. It's a croquet mallet. A croquet mallet recovered from the ground during the melee in the promenade yard. During a combat roll, the owner of the mallet can roll one extra die. Slip this under this card under your receptacle so that only the mallet is showing. Okay. Um, let's give that to Eugene so that he can do a little more combat. Cool. All right. So that is that done. We might come back with this once we have that key. But in the meantime, let's go get the key. It's in the kitchen, which costs us two. Usually costs two.
All right. And don't really care about this one, so we're just going to uh, put our most deft guys. Nice, and I'll just hang out with him there. Give him two cocaine or the meat, which will be useful for later. And then we're going to try this test. Come on, baby. Cost us one. Come on, Eugene. You got this. Nope. Well, shoot. That's fine. All right. Let's try Dr. Hyacinth's office. I don't think it's a great idea, but got to give it a shot. Two. Location eight. Well, I don't have any of those. Let's see. You make your way into the office wing of the asylum, trying many locked doors before finding one whose plaque soberly announces Dr. Hyacinth. You hear the staccato sound of a clumsily used typewriter, and when it pauses after a few seconds, you knock on the door. Enter, calls out a voice. You enter a vast office filled with objects of all sorts. To your left, the bookshelf holds numerous medical tomes and other curios. On the wall, a picture of the staff catches your eye. Seeing his desk, the doctor looks up from his typewriter and stares at you. All right. We're just going to go half and half. So B, it's a picture. Let me take a picture of that with my phone. Oh, it's a little spooky. It can actually it's, it's detect the faces. See, greetings, the doctor calls out to you. As I told you yesterday, the moment of your release is upon us. Remember this, each in their own point of the star. He heads to his bookcase, opens a secret passage, then lights a lamp and says, I'm waiting for you. You can follow him and take the token or beat him up. Uh, let's, let's follow him. Costs us one. Let's see here. You follow the doctor who lights his lamp and uh, who lights with his lamp a maze of tunnels, a true labyrinth, until you reach a metallic door that seems to open only from the inside. The rest is in your hands. We're counting on you. Professor Desmato is waiting for you on the other side. I'll meet up with you shortly. He turns to go back the way he came, closing the door behind himself. Take items nine and seventeen. Item nine is part of the plan, the park, and another pentacle. <coughs> okay, so we've got all that. Uh, place a token on it on the plan to mark it as inaccessible. So no more doctor's office. That's fine, we're going to the park. Which costs us two. All right. Location nine. Mm. 
Okay. All right. You're now in the park. A glacial wind blows and throws the branches of the oaks into a frenzy. In front of you, a gravel path splits into multiple directions. To the north, on your left, the path leads into the woods. You see smoke off in the distance. In front of you, a small esplanade holds a music kiosk. A third path heads southward toward the back of the park. Well, let's find out. B. Down the path, you discover a hovel that's producing all of the smoke. A man walks out of the front door and aims a pistol at you. I'll know who you are, and I'm not going to let you act freely, you damned sorcerers. You can attempt to reason with the man to obtain item 14, or neutralize the man to obtain item 15. Well, let's try reasoning with him first. which will cost us some, so let's uh, check this first. This previously peaceful-seeming kiosk was the scene of violence in the recent past, with traces of combat evident on the top steps, claw marks, torn clothes, and dried blood. As you inspect the remains of a man's suit, you notice an imposing closed metallic trapdoor in the center of the stage it is locked. If you own key 21, take the three pink. I do not have key 21. Location. Minutes down the path, you clear the trees and discover an immense greenhouse, an imposing structure of glass and steel. On the ground before you, you before it, you spot the prints of a rather imposing animal. Take item 11. Item 11 is the greenhouse. All right, and now we're going to do this. That costs us one. We're going to reason with him. So Eugene first. That's three. And... Um, then, wait. We're going to do Ferdinand. And that's the last one. Nice. So we get item 14. This card represents Jules, an ally who accompanies you for the rest of the run. Place three skull shields. When the owner of this card fights against an enemy, Jules can help. Uh, well, I will say Ferdinand got him. So. For each skull discard, the opponent loses one of theirs. When all three have been used... So basically, they're to neutralize later skull shields. Jules suspects the medical team of practicing sorcery. As proof, he hands you a piece of paper he says he found near the kiosk. Take item 13. He also claims that for a number of months now, animal cries have been coming out of the ground every night. Spooky. All right. We'll give those to Ferdinand. And we are taking item 13. October 24th, 1920. Dear Doctor, I finally found an entrance to the crypt. As you had suggested, a riddle which only the es esoteric arts could piece was hidden in that damned gate. Pierce, not peace. The solution had been under our eyes from the start. We had to subtract the number and not add it. All that was then left was to add it to the password. Let's break the rules, my dear Hyacinth. We'll finally be able to move on to the second stage of our dream, recruiting five new patients to complete the ritual. This will allow us to forget the painful previous experiment. Eric Desmarteau. Okay. Well, that is a uh, a bit of a clue. Uh, let's see. I suppose we could go to the greenhouse, but actually, first and foremost, um, the infirmary got me that. Dormitory? Is the dormitory where I get? No, the other key is in the kitchen. I think the dormitory is where... Right, and I gotta go because I got that now anyway, so let's go to the dormitory. Cost us two. Here we go. Ooh. Everything's getting a bit askew.
All right, dormitory. <clears throat> so we're gonna put, um, I think it's a deftness thing. So everybody except yellow, who will go over here, go there, and we are going to do the five shields. Okay. Take items 5 and 18. I believe one is a clue. Yep, another letter. 18. And 18 is the catacomb entrance. There we go. Then we're going to do this, which will cost us the 1. So three gets us two of them, then two, nothing, then one, nothing. Um, I am just gonna spend another one and go again. Nope. Nope. One. Uh, let's give it a shot. So I only get one item out of two, three, and four, so I'm gonna mix them all up and pick this one, number four, a plunger. Ah, uh, useless, okay. So yeah, we're gonna have to go again. Cost us another one. There we go. Two and three. Right, need the pentacles. And probably need the ruby, but we'll find out eventually. <clears throat> now, where? I suppose the greenhouse, because we have two of the four pentacles we need to get. There should be more somewhere. Hmm. Okay, I'm taking off my jacket. It's getting a little warm in here. <clears throat> Let me think. I suppose the greenhouse is the only place I haven't been yet, really. So let's, uh,. Yeah, let's head to the greenhouse. One. Huzzah! Okay. Location 11. There we are. All right, the greenhouse is immense. Within a few seconds of entering, you feel like you're in a tropical forest. The air is hot and humid, the vegetation invading and oppressive. As you start to step down the walkway, you're forced to push aside the brush to clear a way through the plants and branches. To your left, you hear the soft sound of waterfall, accompanied by numerous bird songs. Straight ahead of you, a small basin holds the water that flows from the waterfall. To your right, not far from you, grunting noises can be heard in the midst of the luxuriant vegetation. Well, I will send my two fighting guys to check out the grunts. And these two can do all of that. Uh... Actually, do it that way. Here we go. Behind the waterfall, you spot a small cave. After dashing through the water and soaking your clothes, you discovered within this dark space an impressive statue of a creature with strange symbols on its pedestal. On the ground, a piece of paper flutters in the spray from the waterfall. Okay, nothing to take down. Take item one. It's another pentacle. Nice. Then see... Approaching the basin, you discover a body on the far side of it. The man seems recently deceased. His body and face bear deep claw marks, and tracks on the ground seem to indicate that he's been dragged to this location. 
Inside his torn suit, you find a wallet containing an identity card under the name of Eric Desmato and a large metallic key. Item 21. Which I believe I needed at the park. Yes. Ooh, and that's got the last pentacle. Perfect. And then D. Yep. You advance into the vegetation with all kinds of noises assaulting your ears. Suddenly a roar sounds behind you. A winged creature with the body of a lion and a scorpion's tail attacks you. Fight, then take item 26. All right. That is six skulls. So he's gonna do some damage. All right, we're fighting with Ferdinand first, which gets me three. Which he just barely blocks. And then uh, we get two for Eugene's roll, because he's got the croquet mallet. So that's two that he knocks out. And that means we have one, two, which is just barely safe. All right. Then, yeah, we're going to have to do another one. So Ferdinand again. Come on, Ferdy. Hey, there we go. Take him out. Item 26. An amethyst. An amethyst found near the dead manticore in the greenhouse. Okay. So now we're going to swing back to the park. Which costs us two. Do, 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 do. All right, location nine. Which I believe it was all over here. So we're going to do C. Yeah. Guys, all busted up. We're doing the key. So I take three, which looks like a little fish. Um, I do appreciate that it doesn't make you spend the keys, A, and B, having estate tokens for, like, you can go there now. That's pretty clever. This system is pretty neat. I do like that. Location E. Ooh. Uh, which is going to cost us one to move to. With the trapdoor now open, you descend stone steps into a dark room, hearing primitive chants grow ever louder as you progress. The chanters await you in the room, shouting secular psalms as loud as they can. You notice behind them a hole in the ground, possibly large enough for you to slip into. So we're going to fight. All right, we're going to start with Ferdinand. Ooh, which makes seven, so he takes a damage. Um, and then we're going to use jewels. Uh, not, well, okay, we'll save jewels for now. Then we're going to go to Felix. That's two. Still leaves him with five, unfortunately. Then we're gonna do uh, the two punchy, which is another two. And the one, hopefully we'll take out that last one. Yeah, good work, Marie. Nice. All right, so we get item 16 with minimal damage. Uh, discovered a new location under the kiosk. Well, we are going to go there, of course. Which is going to cost us two time. Sixteen. Let's see how it goes. And when I can find it, hold on. Right, this is the one based on your uh, on your current stuff. So we have we have this one. 
B, C, D. All right, you let yourself slip in through the hole, guarded by the strange creatures that wind up falling through the ceiling of an underground room. Many paths are open to you. To the left, a half-open gate grants you access to a flight of stairs that seems to lead deeper underground. The strong stench of putrefied flesh gives you pause. In the middle, a closed gate bars your way to a long corridor, at the end of which you see a halo of light coming from a crypt. To the right, in the opposite direction from the other pathways, a narrow tunnel winds into the darkness. All right, let's figure out these pentacles. The lock is too sturdy to be broken, and it looks like it requires a code. So let's grab all of our pentacles and work out this code. So this is the big thing here. I'm going to warn you now, as far as spoilers go, this is the big one. This is the main puzzle in the entire thing. So if you don't want to get spoiled, now would be the time to check out. I'm going to say this game's okay. Um, but it's very, very long. As you can probably already tell, it's only taken me two hours basically doing all of this. I think I messed up some rules that made it a little easier. I'm barely making it through. So just, um, yeah, everything going on. This puzzle is what you would get the game for. It's a pretty strong one. I'm about to solve it. So just keep that in mind. There are other sessions and stuff. I have a lot to say about time stories. I'm actually going to make like an analysis, autopsy kind of review thing for it. But for the most part, I'd say if you can split the cost between friends, it might be worth it. Overall, I don't know. If you can get it used, I suppose. But um, yeah, with all of that said, we're going into the instructions of the five pentacles. So here we go. Big spoiler time. So we have all of these pentacles and we have that picture from earlier let me grab that so mm -hmm. All right, so here we go. We want to do them in order, so, okay, that one, this one, um, this one, then, I believe this one. Hmm. Okay, that's the best order I can come up with. So now, going off of these, we had some instructions. So first off, it is southeast, then clockwise. So I do remember parts of this puzzle. I don't remember the exact solution. So here we go. We are starting southeast, and then we're going clockwise in order. If I did this correctly, we should be able to read a message. So, okay. R-E... A D I T Hmm Think I did this a little wrong I T E M so read item across all of these different letters then we got to figure out the number the number is the big question so as they said you got to subtract one of them and if you look on her painting from earlier hold on let me brighten this Ooh, let me brighten this up her painting from earlier it's four pluses and a minus so we're going to add up these four and then subtract that so two seven fourteen twenty two fourteen twenty two 19. So read item 19. If I did this correctly, if you're reading this, it's because you've just solved the pentacles riddle. That took us forever to get the first time, but I knew at least a little bit because it's such a clever puzzle. 
but it's like it's the only puzzle that's the big thing with this it's like you get one really really good puzzle and then a bunch of kind of point and click silliness but that's like how adventure games always were you know they'd have one maybe two or three decent puzzles but then most of it was just like enjoying the world all right um if this is not the case you've taken this card by mistake put it back immediately yeah Note that you'll have to be facing the gate under the kiosk to be allowed to read the rest. If you have fulfilled all of the above conditions, turn this card upside down and read the instructions. All right. Here we go. So we're going to put all of these back. There we go. All right. The solution of the riddle... R-E-A-D-I-T-E-M 2 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 minus 3 allows you to insert the correct code in the gate's lock. A few clicks later, the lock opens without issue, the hinges being apparently well-oiled. Now head to location 15 while changing your time captain as normal. I'm the only time captain here, so, you know, that's how that is. So here we go. We're going to the finale. Crap, I've already forgot which uh, location we're going to. 15, I think. 15. Okay. So we don't have any of these states, unfortunately, but that's fine. The gate leads to a bridge overlooking a long pit from which you hear growls and cries. After crossing the bridge, you enter a crypt filled with gloomy chanting. A heavy atmosphere rules here. A pentacle is drawn on the floor. The young lady you saw in the day room when you arrived, the one who was painting, stands in the middle of it. Uh, a little less clothed. Uh, yeah, she's completely nude and looks up towards you. Very tasteful way that they handle that here. She is not, like, she appears to be nude, but it's all tastefully censored. Um, on each side of her, a statue of a winged creature faces you like a petrified guard. Take item 30, which is, I think, just the last one. Yep. Urgent message. If you're in the middle of an emergency protocol, ignore this card. Um. Cr Agents, Bob here. I can't keep Gert for long. Hold on and take Bert. Message interrupted. From this point on, if the time token ever reaches zero to you, read the mission failed card. Yeah. Uh, because I am in the emergency protocol, we're ignoring that, but we're very close. Uh, oh yeah, and I was supposed to do this one. So we have one more to go. All right. Let's check it all out. In fact, let's do it this way. B. The pose, the mane, the wings, everything leads you to believe that this statue is ready to leap on you at any moment. In the space where each eye should be, you see a hollow ready to hold something. If you own the two gems, amethyst and ruby, take item 27. I do. So, awesome. It'd be real annoying if you got this far. Yeah, yeah, no, the uh, asylum is just the first episode, which they do say in the instructions, and I actually have... Scenario 2, the Marcy case, which I'm going to play with my roommates first, but I'll probably stream this at some point. Uh, shoot! I knocked a bunch of stuff over. Grabbing that. Hold on. Hold on! Okay, okay, sorry. But uh, yeah, we get item 27. Once the two gemstones are placed in the hollows, a halo of light surrounds the two statues, accompanied by a buzzing and vibrations. The creature's wings seem to begin moving, then a black point materializes between the two sculptures. This point then fades into a cube-shaped item that falls to your feet. On one of its faces, an inscription reads, Temporalis Itir Occultis. Keep this item for a future adventure, because you never know. All right. We'll uh, hang on to that. 
and uh, what was this then? The pose, the mane, the wings, everything. Yep, same description. And then we have the young woman stands nude on one of the pentacles points. With a gesture of her hand, she invites each of you to take a place on the other points. Will you follow her instructions? Hmm. Let's see. If so, we go here. If not, and you have green, then you can go here. If you do not own it, well, let's go there. After you refuse the young woman's invitation, a man in a white robe and hood rushes into the room and shouts at you, but you can't refuse this historical moment. You're nothing but nutcases. You're good for nothing else. Yeah, excuse me. Let me do that again. But you can't refuse this historical moment. You're nothing but nutcases. You're good for nothing else. You recognize the voice of Dr. Hyacinth, who now charges at you. So we get three of each. Do, 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 and we're gonna fight so right uh we all ended up here then uh i'm immediately gonna use jewels good thing i saved him so we can get rid of these goodbye jewels thank you so much then we're gonna use him first that's two of them and that's one so he's safe then we're gonna use felix and that's the last one we did it. The young woman becomes hysterical. You have no right to prevent my release. No, the ritual must take place. As if by magic, she floats off the ground, then dives at you. All right. Um. Had to get one of the heart ones. Uh, I don't remember what that means, though. Let's see. Oh, no. So that could do some damage to us. All right. Let's find out. Hit it, Ferdinand. Two. Okay, he's safe. Then, Felix. Two. Which leaves um, two there, so he's safe. And then, Eugene. Ooh, two. So he's safe, thankfully. Um, and then, we may as well do Maddie. One! Marie saved it once again! Coming in clutch twice. Um, there are also instructions on the website for making your own stories. If I were to make my own story, I'd make a crossover with the Netflix Castlevania show. Ooh, that's... that's a good idea. The story would be that the agents are trying to stop the incident that incited the show's events. Interesting. I, I, I definitely like that concept. I'm... I'm curious how long that story could really be, but... I, I'm definitely interested, so if you do that, I will, you know, if you do create that, and I still have time stories because I'm still on the fence whether I'm going to, you know, sell it, um, just because I haven't gotten much use out of it. I don't know. The Marcy case will be the deciding thing because Asylum was, like, fine, but it's really problematic, and there's, like, a lot of other things. But if the Marcy case is really cool, I'll probably hang on to it and do some more, and I'll definitely play that on stream if you put it out. I'll keep an eye out for it. Um and if you join my Discord and tell us about the development and stuff, I'd love to hear about it. And yeah, like message me on uh, Discord, which you can find down below. You can find my uh, Discord server, and I'm in there. You can go to my Twitter, or you can send me a whisper here on Twitch whenever you have that complete, and I will totally play it on the show. As long as I still have time stories, but I'll hang on to it for a while. The Jaywits love the fantasy adventure. I mean, good for him. I'm not a huge fan of fantasy to begin with, so eh, I don't know. That's the problem. Is none of these settings super excite me for the most part? It's like it's like asylum, zombies. Uh, there's like an Egypt one. There's a fantasy one. They all seem kind of, like you can do good stories in those settings, but like none of them sound super exciting. I guess, but. We'll see. I got at least one more stream of this I'll do sometime, but we're about ready to finish this. 
I just defeated her. So let's reveal item 10. Mission successful. Congratulations, you've reached the end of your tribulations. You foiled the dark plot of Dr. Hyacinth and his acolytes with gusto. Oh, there's also one said in Old Hollywood. Okay, that one sounds interesting. One said in Old Hollywood. I definitely got to check out that one. Um, but yeah, there's like a lot of them. And there's all the fan ones, like you said. Um, so, who knows? Maybe I'll be able to get something in the all of that content. But the temporal fault has been avoided. Get ready to be transferred. The mission successful card. Here we go. Bob greets you as you exit the caissons. Contrary to his usual demeanor, he seems more than satisfied with your performance. All right, guys, not bad. I kept an eye on you during the mission. You made me freak out at one point, but you managed to set things right. I'm pretty happy that my recruits lived up to my expectations. Go calculate your performance so that you'll have something to show off in the, the cafeteria. Take item 28. Item 28. You score the following points according to the number of runs needed to successfully complete the mission. Um, this was my third run. Add one MP for each uh, TU remaining. I have exactly one, so 21. Uh, yeah, we got 21. If you stopped ever hovering the mission failed card, total your points normally, but then deduct. Uh, I didn't read that purple one, so I'm good. In all cases, note your final score and check your team's credential level. I'm not going to write that in there. I'm not going to make things permanent. Uh, fewer than 10 MPs, slow pokes on potato peel and duty. Rate recruits, second class agents, first class agents, special agents. All right, we got 21. That's not bad. That's not bad. Um, and now we're reading item 29. You'll now receive beacons that you can keep from one scenario to the next. It's up to you to use them effectively, and their usage is simple. Break open the beacon, use the effect right on its back, then discard it. Each beacon can be used only once. The beacons are located under the plastic insert in your game box. That's right. I love when games do stuff like this. We got secrets underneath. Ha ha. I love that. All right. It's up to you to use them effectively. The beacons are located under. You gain beacons based on your team's credential level. Um, let's see. Second class agents. One pink beacon and one blue beacon. There we go. And I also have a pink one already from when I played this the first time with my roommates. Which I didn't use, and I will say that this is a part of that, so. Um, you're now ready to attempt your second mission, 1992 NT, the Marcy case. Which I believe there's some stuff about that in here. Yeah, we got the Marcy case, a prophecy of dragons, and under the mask some expansions and i have marcy case so i will probably stream that at some point i gotta play it with my roommates first but yeah that's it time story asylum i was able to do it in just about two hours if you factor in the break overall time stories is a really cool system i feel like this is not the best story that they could have used as the introduction honestly it, i'm very curious to see how the the different sessions go um, but yeah, I have a lot of things to say about it. I want to make sure to play some more of the different scenarios before I fully make my video, but I want to make a video exploring this and kind of doing an autopsy. But like I said, going to do the Marcy case at some point. And yeah, if Legally Blind Gamer 7926 finishes that uh, Netflix Castlevania show before I end up, you know, selling this, I'll hang on to it for a little longer waiting for you. But, you know, you got to you got to promise me that you're going to actually work on it. Um, I'd say if you work on that, I will play it at some point, but if you end up not doing it, that's fine. Just, you know, just want to know. But, uh, in any case, thank you guys very much for choosing Iggy Kid Twitch streams as your streaming entertainment today. I know you have a lot of choices in streaming entertainment, so I appreciate you choosing me. Please take the time to follow and subscribe if you can and, uh, use your Twitch Prime sub. So connect your Amazon Prime account and, uh, the two then you can get a free sub a month. Use it on me. I appreciate it, because I know you will. And I appreciate you, Legally Blind Gamer. It, n no pressure. Sorry. I, it was meant to be an incentive, but don't feel, like, pressured to do it. You know? I'd love to see it, but if you decide, like, it's going to be too much work or something, just let me know. I just need want to know if, like, if there's a chance it's going to happen, I'll hang on to the set. If there isn't, I might end up selling this used. But we'll see. 
in the future. But yeah, just just keep me updated. Join the Discord, which is the other thing. Yeah, you can join the Discord down below. It's open to join. And uh, yeah, we're I I there's not a ton of activity currently. I got a few members, but yeah. Um, but yeah, if, if hang out, do whatever you know. You can promote your stuff if you're doing any tabletop design kind of stuff. There's places to promote that in my server. Um, check out my Twitter, my YouTube, my YouTube archive for all of the streams I've done in the past. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Let's see who there is to rate over to real quick. And uh, oh yeah, yeah, I hope you guys will join me on Tuesday. I'm going to play more jack x i've been meaning to get back to it but uh in any case if no one else has told you this i'll tell you this you're a good kid thanks for watching everybody let's see who there is to raid over to who's online right now come on now um who's playing board games right now the only person i see is Has hasanabi board games who's in board games right now a uh, Gwerik. Gwerik is going. Let's 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 raid over to Gwerik. That should be fun. All right, I'm gonna open it so I can get through the ad. All right, one sec. Actually, let me type it in on my computer. It'll be faster. I think I spelled that right. Yes, all right. Enjoy Gwerik's stream. Let him know I sent you. Have a great rest of your weekend, everybody. Thanks for watching, okay? Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.